Welcome back to the Work Inspired Podcast, Tzvi Broker with Rav Yeshua Gerzi. And we would like to welcome our Torah anytime and other listeners around the world. Now today's topic is something which is something that just happened in my own life. You know, recently I was looking on LinkedIn and saw a post um, from someone that I've recently met who's an osteopath, someone involved in you know, personal training and fitness. And he reached out to me a couple of months ago. It's a bit embarrassing, but I'll share it. Why not? You know, a couple of months ago. And he said, listen, you know, I'm, I'm in this training program and I'd like to set up an interview with you just to hear about you. And in return for this interview, I'm going to offer you this hour session of just really intensive working out. So I said, you know, I need to work out. Why not? We'll try. So I got on the phone with this guy, sweet yid, sweet yid. And what he was doing was just trying to understand a bit about me and understand about, you know, somebody who is a father and somebody who's a professional, like how I relate to my health and what I would like to change and what are my blocks. So he's trying to understand ultimately who his market was, you know, because he's trying to work. There's such a thing as uh, when people become fathers that sometimes they need to get in shape. And we had the interview, it was a nice conversation, and he said, okay, let's set up a time, I'm going to come out, we're going to meet in a park, I'm going to bring these straps, and like, I, it sounded quite scary to me, but he was like, let's do it. I'm like, yeah, let's do it. But then I had to cancel. <laughs> That's what happened. I don't remember the first reason why I canceled, but I had to cancel, and it hasn't happened yet. That's why it's a bit embarrassing that we haven't yet had that time, and every time I'm like, yeah, I'm going to do it, but just something gets in the way. And what happened was I saw this post, and in this post, he was showing in this picture about when you're working your desk and you're by your computer, all these different sort of types of poses and ways of standing that, and he was saying that, you know, while you're sitting at your desk or you're in your office, you have the ability to be able to also get in shape and exercise just depending on the way that you stand. And I was like, yeah, that, that's, that's going to work for me because, you know, for a number of hours a day, I'm sitting by a computer. So I, I reached back out to him and I'm like, I saw your post, maybe we can do that instead of that intensive workout in the park. <laughs> that was really what we're up to right now in the conversation. But it, it really intrigued me because when I saw this, I'm like, that's so interesting. You know, and I, I've seen somebody involved, you know, somebody involved in the workplace, things being written about this, that, you know, the, the way that we, the way that we stand, you know, in the whole realm of body language, you know, the way that we stand, the way, you know, the way that we're sitting could actually have an impact, you know, not just on our overall health, but an impact on our actual productivity. And, you know, as I was thinking about this over the last couple of days, you know, as we always do here in the context of our, our podcast and everything we do in, in Work Inspired and our Chabura and Bezos Hashem, our global Chabura, is really to understand where the Torah's wisdom, we know that the Torah is found all throughout creation. What does the, the Torah's wisdom have to say? Is there something really there about this topic? You know, we know about work. You know, if you've been with our program, we know the Torah tells us, it's an opportunity for Tavekus, it's something we should feel positive about, it's an opportunity to feel good. Now, what about the way that we stand? Like, is there something in the Torah that is reflecting this question of when you're at your work desk, you know, wherever you are involved with your work, how you stand sitting, is there something there? It's a good one. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's a very, it's very different. good one. It's, it's a small point, but like everything, I'm sure there must be so it's, much depth. It's very interesting for me because, number one, I'm a physical therapist. And this is something that I had to deal with for a long time, but as well... With people that didn't want to work out with you. <laughs> yes, people that didn't want to work out, and then they see a, post, a blog about standing, yes, to get out of working out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the Nakuda of... In the Arabi Yusaydus, we have physical health. <laughs> Yeah. So something in the something with with physical health. This is something that I explored. So when you asked me about standing or sitting, it's like yeah, I have something to say about it. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry because it's something that's obviously connected to the physical health in Arabi Sidus. And and in one in one part we have a kuntras where we speak about the different beginners of standing and sitting and the benefits. And I didn't have to think so hard because I already worked on it about 16 years ago. Um, but it's, it's, it's very interesting, actually, because there's, first of all, first of all, in general, there's so many things that we don't necessarily take into consideration that can have massive impact in the way that we manifest at work, but in general. In Torah, if we think about it, we have actually halachas that govern us there's times to stand and there's times to sit. So, for example, one of the tefillas is called the standing tefillah, the amida. Right, you stand called, up. 
Yeah, it's called Ani then. And then you have, for example, by the Shema or by Kriya Satari, that's actually a custom to sit. So now you have to ask yourself, well, oh, that, that's interesting. So in the world of Halacha, we're told to stand at certain parts of tefillah and to sit at certain parts of tefillah. Well, does that mean something? Does that have some sort of symbolism? Does it actually mean something? And actually, there's so many makaras. There's so many makaras. It's and it's so easily missed. You've got Adir Bamaram. You've got the the Ramchal, Reb Chaim Lutzata, Reb Moshe Chaim Lutzata. One of his books. He speaks about this idea of standing and sitting. So just as in the halacha, in the law, we speak about saying the Shema or listening to the recitation of the Torah sitting. And then we have the Amida, the Shmon Esrei, which is the standing prayer. The Ramchal goes into and explains some of the Kabbalistic concepts behind this. Wow. And then you have other sources as well. So it's interesting because, for example, when we are reciting the Shema or listening to the recitation, recitation of the Torah, when it's being read, we sit because we're a nation. When we sit, it's the idea, it's a symbolism of us sitting together as a nation. Meaning, meaning there's, when we stand, there's more of an aspect individuality. of individuality. Correct. And sitting is just like sitting and kind of becoming, merging more into exactly. the bigger. Exactly, which is really beautiful. And this is just one idea. And there's several different ideas which we're not going to go into now because once we start going into it, I've got a big mouth and I don't stop. <laughs> but but th- th- just this idea, this sensitivity, this sensitivity, it's also found, by the way, in, for example, people don't hear about this today, but in the world of Musa, in the world of Musa, what do you think? Did they sit or stand in the world of Musa? I'm like imagining stories of standing. Correct. I'm imagining stories of so standing. So one, one of the tzaddikim, the Alt of Navaduk, he had built for him a certain shtender, which is a, I think in English, a lectern? What do they call it? I it's think, a stand yeah. where you put your books to learn. So he had a shtender that was made quite tall, so he had to stand up really straight. Meaning, so in the world of Musa, there make was... Sure that if in order to be able to reach it, he had to stand up. It wasn't like a typical shtender. He had to make sure yeah. that his, his posture was aligned. He, wasn't, me he wasn't He wasn't. necessarily doing it because of his posture. He was doing it because of fear of God. Right, but right, yes, right, right. right. Meaning, meaning there's something connected to the, the fear of Hashem and the way that a person's standing. Correct. And in our family, the Sasfer Rebbe told me one of the customs of a great uncle, when he would be learning the revealed Torah, he would stand and when he would learn the hidden Torah, he would sit. When he would learn the Kabbalistic texts, he would sit, which is an aspect of what we call bittle, subjugation. It's uh, my legs. I don't have my legs. Sitting is an, a, one idea of surrendering to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So when he would learn Hasidus and Kabbalah, when he would learn the Hasidic texts, the Kabbalistic texts, he would sit. A symbolism, Hashem, I can't stand without you. But when he would learn the revealed Torah, the Gemara, the Halacha, he would stand. Fascinating. I was thinking about that now from a <coughs> place of sitting, but we know like um, the Beis Amikdash, you know, when we came for Oli Regal, yes. it's kind of a forgotten art, you know, you know, sometimes, you know, we see the, some, our cousins, you know, that they like go down on the floor Postrate, and complete we, we, something we don't relate to. It's like, wow, but like it's something that we did. And I, I was, you know, part of the idea over there of, of I'm sure it's connected to the idea of Bittal, you know, of the idea of we're coming before HaKadosh Baruch Hu and we're actually lying down. That's fascinating. Did anybody lie down when they learned? They I don't know. I'm sure I could find somebody. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know anyone who lied down when they learned. Right. That's uh, fascinating. Okay, wow. So what we're hearing is is that there is the, within sitting, it's so interesting that you mentioned, like Shimon Esrei, all the time I know, people's like, Amida, Amida, Amida. The fact that it's even called that is something which is hinting that there's something connected to the process of what we're doing that's connected to the standing state while the sitting state is connected to trying to tap into some type of more of an, an energy which is taking place, and we want to align ourselves with that spiritual energy. Correct. Wow. It's yeah. so fascinating. I know, you know, I, I, you know, we know that we say, you know, that, that uh, Chachma B'gayim Tamin, right? That the Torah, the Gayim don't have Torah, but Chachma B'gayim Tamin. It's interesting because we see, you know, I'm sure Rabbi is, Researched this extensively to know when this became more of an issue, you know, more of something brought to the table. But definitely, you see more and more um, in recent years for myself 
when there's you know this topic of communication and emotional 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 intelligence like this concept of body language you know where psychologists are speaking about this idea that you know you can you can tell a lot you know and by the way a person is standing if you want to communicate something then you want to align your body in a way i don't know what i'm doing right now see with my hands to be able to communicate i'll tell you a funny thing i recently had a meeting um with um, with somebody who is uh, running a startup. I should have got them to sponsor this podcast. Okay, I'm not going to mention your name. I don't remember it, but it was so cool. Uh, okay, what, 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 basically what their product was, I think I shared this to you. Their product was, make sure to Google them. Um, their product was, was that they worked with sales teams because a lot of things have been moved onto Zoom and virtual today. That what they what they do is is that there's some type of an AI or the software is basically able to watch, uh, record, and to analyze the body movements oh, right. of yes. the sales agents while they're uh, yeah. people in the conversations online. Uh, while you're online, place, and as you're like talking, a bot. it's measuring. Yeah, there's a bot. Yes. So that afterwards, so then you can watch it, and it gives you Critiques feedback. You. Like it, where yeah. did your conversation go wrong? Like you're able to read. The face and the arm movement of the per, of the of the person, the salesman, and the person on the other side, so that therefore you're able to analyze it. Because and I was like, okay, that bot's watching me. You're going to tell me after our meeting everything that was going through my head. But it's a fascinating thing. We we find this, you know, especially as consumer behavior and human behavior becomes so much, you know, on the conversation today, where we're actually paying attention to the connection between the emotions, the connection between the energy flows, you know, and how that impact, you know, takes, to, you know, comes into play. There's, it's, we, we've spoken about this before. We actually spoke about this yesterday. There's this idea that everyone speaks about mind over matter, mind over matter. And it is a truth. There is a truth out there, mind over matter. But then there's as well an untapped resource, and that's called matter over mind. Resource, research shows definitively, you change your posture, you change your biochemistry. It's a wild massive. You change your posture. Just by changing your posture, you change your biochemistry. And we speak about, we speak about, for example, we were mentioning this just before. It's very nice. Look at this. It's in Seifa Yitzira, where you have at the beginning of the Seifa Yitzira, first Perak, first Mishnah. I'm saying it out of order purposefully, but you have what we call the digits. You have, which is called energy. You have what we call the story, Sipur. And then you have the sefer, the books. Meaning sipur as opposed to mispar? Mispar. Meaning you have mispar. mispar sipur, so again, the in the sefer Yitzir, it's out of order for a particular reason. But where I want to go with this, I'm sharing it in this way. So one of the commentaries say something absolutely profound. Sometimes people try to change a behavior. So they've got some sort of strategy to change a behavior. But what happens if their internal story is not changed then however much they want to change through that strategy, it's not going to work. So what does that mean? Say, for example, you are getting up early in the morning, but you have a voice inside your head, oh, this ain't going to last. I've tried so many times before to do this. So it's not going to stick. The behavior is not going to stick. So we know if you really want to change a behavior and you want to use a strategy to change your behavior, you have to change your story, which is Sipur. Right. Sefer is the idea of a strategy, information, a behavioral change. Okay? okay. I want to change a behavior. However, you need to change your sipur, your internal story. Okay. However, behind your internal story is what we call your state. It's the energy flowing through your body. So in the world of Musa, I learned something from one of my teachers a long time ago. In passing, it was in passing, I had to excavate and bring it out of him. Rabbi Mordechai Zuckerman spoke about hislavus, hitla avut, which translates as loving, being engaged. And what that is, is as following. Listen to this, profound. You want to change your behavior, change your story. You want to change your story, change your state. How do you change your state? Well, change your purposefully, your physiology, your emotionality, your focus. So you stand up straight. And you say, I can do this. I can do this. Baruch Hashem, I can. Say. Put a big smile on your face. Big smile. Roll your shoulders back. Stand up tall. Stand up proud. Not in a guy Vedika way. A healthy way. So you stand up tall. That change. You feel good. Put a pencil inside. Put a pencil in your mouth. <laughs> 
you know, changes the muscles. You start working muscles to that don't work usually make, get... To make work inspired pencils. Yes. Well, Especially for smiling. You reach out if you like one. But... Uh, so what <laughs> happens is you change your state, then it's easier to change your story, and then it's easier to change the behavior. But if you change your physiology, if you change your physiology, you can change and then focus your emotionality, you can change your emotions, and you can become far more productive, far more productive. Judaism is very sophisticated in its approach. Unfortunately, between the First and Second World Wars, decimated. We lost a lot of wisdom. But there were certain gedolim who carried through this wisdom over the years. Wow. And, and this is something I learned from my teacher. People want to change and they have all these strategies to change. Sefer. But if they haven't changed their story, it's very difficult. So change your state. Change your state, it's easier to change your story. From changing your story, a strategy that you want to keep is much more sticky. It holds. Right. How do you change your state? Change your posture. Change your emotionality. Ah, put a big smile on your face. You know, my kids, I uh, drive my kids mad. Three o'clock in the morning when I get up, it's like, woo! But you hear, you hear this wisdom. I know, it, it's... It's so powerful because I think that for a lot of people, you know, especially, you know, we're, we're looking for eights, we're looking for tips, and we spoke about it recently, you know, we're looking for uh, strategies, you know, just like action points, do, 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 give me something to do, but as nice as it is, you know, and it's, we can take it and put it, you know, put it in our wallet, put it on our wall, you know, and feel like we have something to do, we all know, maybe it's just me, but I, I think we all know that it doesn't work a lot, and what I'm hearing Difficult, is, is that... Yeah. It doesn't work often because if there's a story behind, you know, if maybe we'll call that mind, but if there's a story behind that's basically stopping us internally, so that itself is going to stop us from changing that behavior. Now, the question is, okay, but now, okay, so I understand that I have a bad attitude. I understand that I have a story. Now, what do I do? So for many people, we think, okay, so let's work on changing that story. How are we going to work on changing that story? Let's excavate what our beliefs are. Let's yes. understand where yes. those thoughts are coming mm -hmm. from. It, it came from this uh, you know, traumatic experience I went through. You know, This is something that happened to me, and that's something which is Avodis Hashem as well. But what I'm hearing is, is that there's also this other, I don't call it a hack, but it's, it's, it's the way that Hashem built our system, which is that if we take that, if we align our, our state right, or our physical posture in, and what we can change, then that itself can help us to change the story, which will then yes. enable us to be able to change Th Think the about it, think about it. How many guys and girls we've had the honor of working with? And just think about the difference. If somebody is depressed, like how do you do depressed? Show me depressed, what would your body look like? You know, heavy, heavy. Yeah, heavy, Yeah. low face, heavy. So try changing your story when you're in that state. I can do it. I can get up on time. I love myself. It's not right, easy. Right. Down, down. But when you roll your... Right, put a smile easy. on your face. I can do it. My energy changes. I can sit up. My energy changes. That energy flowing through my body, coursing through my body, becomes more alive. And the moment it becomes more alive, then I can do it. I right. can do it. I think I've shared the story before, maybe on the podcast. One of the first cases, so to speak, I brought to Rabbi Singer, the Pilsner Rav, was a, a wonderful young man who was doing depressing very well. He was depressing really, really well. And, and it, wasn't, it wasn't clinical. It was, he was in a very, very bad way. And he was learning engineering. He was learning architecture and engineering. And I asked Rabbi Singer, what can I tell him to do? And he stopped. And this is after I shared with Rabbi Singer a little bit about what this young man was doing. So Rabbi Singer said, for the next week, tell him to go round London, look up at the old buildings and take pictures at the old buildings, the top of the buildings, the top of the buildings. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, and it's not, not, it's yeah, tell him to I do that. So I said to him, I said, listen, I said, uh, you know, this is what, this is what my teacher said. I, 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 I've got nothing to say, but do it, like try it. Anyway, he came back and he was far happier. Now, it was an amazing thing. I went back to Rabbi Singer and it made a shift. It made a drastic, dramatic shift in his behavior. And it really picked himself on, picked himself up to carry on. He could now stand in and stand up to that which was going on. And Baruch Hashem, he did very, very well. And today he's done very well. But I said to Rabbi Singer, I said, Rabbi Singer Hanavi. And he laughed at me. So he said, what was his posture like when he came to you? What was he doing? 
So Tachlis, at the end of the day, what was he doing? He was spending most of his time in the house, and he was like this, down. And by him going out, and by him looking up, it changed his way of thinking. We even say, looking down and looking up. Right. Change your physiology, change your emotionality, change your thinking, then you can change your story. And when you can change your story, you then can have, so to speak, avoiders, you can have behavioral changes that work. You can do something and it, it, it makes a difference. Yeah, it reminds me of a, a Torah that, you know, they really called my eye years ago um, in the Siva Shalom, where in the Siva Shalom, and I think it's in Chedak Aleph, he speaks about Simcha. And he goes through different, you know, different types of Simcha and different Marimakomas and Simcha. And, and all the way at the end, at the end of the piece over there, where he says this beautiful thing that he says that sometimes what happens is, is that the, the Simcha is something which starts from Bifnim, it starts within ourselves. You know, classical situation, imagine, you know, a person's at their own chasana, okay? Or, or at their best friend's chasana, or their, ch- their child's chasana. There's a simcha, that, and, and, and that simcha wants to be manifested. So therefore, the best way, to, the, in order for it to be able to manifest, like the, the P.S. Essence says as well, right, in, in, I believe in B'nai Mach Shavatoi, he speaks about this, that in order for that simcha to be able to manifest, he has to dance. Yes, because yes. to have all of that simcha, yeah. Yeah, be t- totally happy, like, you know, it's at your wedding, and just sit there like this. Like, it can't, right? Because the body has to be aligned with that process, so it, it, it becomes aligned, and, and there's simcha, and, the, and there's dancing. And the Siva Shalom says is that sometimes a person doesn't have that, and the solution is dance. And then through the dancing, yeah, exactly. that exactly. will awaken it. I think that's exactly, that exactly what Islam just Islam shared. Islam it's like Islam sometimes Islam. we just have to dance. I'm not Islam feeling Islam. that way, yeah. Yeah. but you're able to make that change. There's I want, so much to talk about. Yeah. There's so much As to always, talk you about. know, this is a, a little bit of a slip. Oh, let's try, try to bring it back, you know, as we're wrapping up to, you know, where we started my conversation with this good old osteo- osteo- osteopath. Mr. Shem's going to help me. I'll let you know how it goes. But bringing this into our everyday, you know, 100%. standing there in our offices, you know, standing so many at the people, desk. you know, at the standing desk, desk, being in the office, work. and so many people, you know, they, they struggle, right, because, you know, what are you supposed to do, you know, you're sitting in front of a computer, you know, and, or, you know, and you're sitting in front, you know, in an office, and, you know, people start getting uh, achy and start people feeling stuck. What could we do, like, what would you say, like, if, in terms of trying to bring all this together, trying to connect the Ruchnius aspect, trying to connect, you know, which I'm sure the Ruchnius, I was just seeing this is a Chavrusa with a Chavr just today. Once again, huge topic. I know that Rebbe purposely didn't even mention it. You know, how the spheres come into play. You know, the, what we're connecting to when we're talking about, you know, posture and parts of our body and legs and the Netzach and Hod and, you know, what, what we're using. But what we can, how can we try to be able to connect, you know, this practically? You know, when we're trying, you know, in terms of how to make that decision when you're in your office, when to stand, when to sit, you know, trying to maybe perhaps pay attention to different types of tasks that we're trying to do, energy flows throughout the day. Like, what's something that we think we can walk away with? I I think, let me just share some of the earliest, if I remember correctly, Harvard put out a document, they put out a research paper back 2016. That's the first time, I think that's one of the first papers I have, 2016, standing at your desk at work. And then throughout the years, I've got many 50, 60, 70 research papers. And I just want to speak about the research and and the rest we'll have to share at another time. But when we stand at work, at our desk, it's unbelievable. When people are sitting the whole time, it's, if not with Kavana, and if they don't even know what's going on behind the scenes of the symbolism of sitting, we, we're not using energy. You know, we're not using energy, we're sitting, we, we're not engaged, we're less engaged. And without kavana, sometimes we switch off, but it's so normal to us. In school, we were sitting. All throughout college, you know, university, yeshiva, right. a lot of the time we're sitting. We sit. When we stand, it does amazing things for us. When we stand, it helps our posture, Research shows that when we stand at our desk, it helps our mood. It helps the flow, all the juices, all the liquids in our body move around. When we are standing, helps with our circulation. That's called circulation. And as well, research shows it boosts productivity. You're more engaged. It boosts productivity. And I think like this, at first, when we're not used to standing, it actually hurts. I was actually working with Rosh Hashiva, who was 
almost in a wheelchair, almost in a wheelchair. And I was doing rehabilitation and I said, it's also for you to sit for five to six hours a day. You have to stand. And it's an amazing thing. He lost weight. He felt so much better. He was far more engaged. Yes, at first his legs hurt him, but I'll tell you where it made a difference. Little thing, listen to this. Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, he called me up afterwards and he says, I cannot thank you enough. I, I didn't have to sit all of Davening because his legs were stronger. He was stronger. He felt good. And there's so many physiological, emotional and psychological benefits to standing. So I would suggest anybody, you're at work and if you can, gift yourself the ability to stand. When you're learning Torah, gift yourself the ability to stand at a stender. Gift yourself as you work to stand at a desk. It's an amazing thing. Research shows as well, people who are standing while they're speaking to somebody on Zoom, Skype, in, a, in an online meeting, far more engaged and productive. Just through and by standing. But what about, what about the pro, the pro uh, sitting co committee over here? I mean, we, we, I mean, um, yeah, we're mean? sitting, aren't we? Um, <laughs> it's good, to, you, you balance it. You, you balance, balance it, it. you, you balance, balance it. it. Sometimes when you uh, need to be more concentrating, sometimes, sometimes you may find it's better to stick. Sit, you have to figure it out for yourself. Okay. You have I to see. figure it out. It's, it's your, you know, that maybe that could be the invitation for this week. <laughs> you, you, no, you can hear the invitation. Figure out for yourself what's healthy for you. But try it. Try it and notice the benefits. Right. Note, at first it may ache, but after a few days it should dissipate. Right, and I think just, you know, just adding to what Rebbe's action point for this week is just to be aware of this. You know, I, got I, to do, I got to do the action point, action point this point week, thank you. Is that, uh, I have to add on to it though. Okay. Uh, so the action point is, is to be aware of this, right? Because for so many people, even paying attention to the concept, am I sitting, am I standing, I don't know, I don't even know what I'm doing. You know, I notice if my back hurts or it doesn't hurt, but not actually recognizing the impact that it can have. Pay attention and play around with, become aware of what you're doing, play around with standing at different points of your, you know, a day. Try having a phone call, a sales call while standing, yeah. a sales call while sitting. People yeah. may look at you, what's going on? You know, just to pay attention, see, you know, what impact that has on you. And, you know, if you're in a situation, you know, where you have to sit, you know, you're having a team meeting, and like, you don't want to be that only guy standing. So then perhaps have in mind one of the beautiful things that we shared here today about this idea that we find, like Kriya Shema, like Kabbalah Sotar, it's an aspect of vital, it's an aspect of connecting. And just be aware of this fact that, you know, as you stand up, you know, and you make that choice to sit, right? A way to be able to connect this to Avodah this Hashem is, right now I want to access something about Bittu. I'm now going to become one with the people. I'm going to become perhaps a bit more collaborative. I'm going to focus on being quiet. I'm going to focus on listening. And as you make that choice to sit down, you can do it in that way to be able to connect with something in a deeper way. Very nice. Very Thank nice. you very much for sharing. And I know there's a lot more. I think it was so beautiful because, you know, as Rebbe said many times in this podcast, you know, when it comes to the Arbi Yisodas Chavra, financial health, you know, and work, which is what Work Inspire is all about, is only half. It's only 50% of one of the Yisodes, right? There's four Yisodes, and one of the Yisodes is financial and physical health. And, you know, here in Work Inspired, we've been focused on financial health and work and, you know, and career, and it's such an important topic. It's so nice to see today how really these two aspects of the Yisod, of this Yis the same Yisoda are really working together. That's right. You know, and the more that we do that, the more that we're able to live integrated lives. Shkaya, thank you.